Hi everyone, welcome to the WSO2 Identity Server Single Sign-On with SAML training video. In this video, we are going to learn how to use SAML to implement SSO. Let's begin by briefly understanding what Single Sign-On is. Single Sign-On, most commonly known as SSO, enables users to provide their credentials once and obtain access to multiple applications. This enables the users to sign into one application and gain access to all the other applications that share the same session. For more information on SSO, watch our WSO2 Identity Server single sign-on training video. The Security Assertion Markup Language, commonly known as SAML, is an XML-based markup language which is a well-known open standard that is mainly used to implement federated authentication and SSO. This open standard defines how security information is encoded into XML messages and passed between trusted parties. SAML2 has three types of participants, namely user, service provider, and identity provider. The user, also known as the subject or the principal, represents the end user who has a user account in the identity provider and tries to access the service provider application. For example, John Doe is the user in this application who holds an account in the identity provider. The client application, also known as the service provider or the relying party, is a web or a mobile application that the end user wants to access and perform several operations upon. The identity provider, also known as the asserting party, manages the user accounts and is responsible for verifying the user's authenticity. Prior to security information exchange, there should be a trust relationship set up between the service provider and the identity provider. This trust relationship is based on public key cryptography. Let's consider an authentication flow that the service provider initiated or the end user initiated by accessing the end application. When the user, John Doe, attempts to access the service provider, it generates an authentication request and sends it to the identity provider requesting the user's identity information. The authentication request is an XML message which is defined in the SAML specification and that contains the service provider's information and additional requirements to be obtained from the identity provider. In the next step, the identity provider validates the authentication request and prompts the end user to enter the credentials. After the successful authentication, the identity provider creates a session and generates an XML message called SAML assertion and passes that back to the service provider. The response contains the name of the authenticated user and the requested attributes, if any. In order to verify that this message was actually sent from the correct identity provider, the identity provider signs the response using its private key and the service provider validates it using the public key of the identity provider. If the message contains sensitive data, it will also be encrypted. Once the service provider validates the authentication aspect and the signature, it then creates a user session and provides the services in accordance. This is how a sample SAML assertion looks. The SAML assertion is the XML document that the identity provider sends to the service provider containing the user authorization. There are three different types of SAML assertions authentication, attribute, and authorization decision assertions. Authentication assertions prove identification of the user and provide the time the user logged in and the method of authentication that was used. The attribute assertion provides information about the user, such as name, email, and mobile number. An authorization decision assertion reveals if the user is authorized to use the service or if the identity provider denied the request due to lack of rights to the service. The critical aspects of SAML 2.0 protocol are covered in detail in the following specifications. SAML core specification defines the syntax and semantics for SAML assertions and the protocols for requesting and returning them. SAML bind specification defines frameworks for embedding and transport of SAML protocol messages in different communication protocols and frameworks such as post binding and artifact binding. SAML profile specification provides a baseline for the use of SAML assertions and protocols to accomplish specific use cases such as single sign-on and single logout. 
SAML metadata specification is used to define the service provider and identity provider information in a standard way. We have now come to the end of this training video. Let's have a quick recap of what we learned from this training. First, we got a brief introduction to SSO. Next, we learned about the SAML2 participants and the SAML2 authentication flow. Finally, we got to know about SAML assertions and SAML specifications. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to get in touch with us through the following channels. Our email is iam-dev at wso2.org. In Stack Overflow, tag your queries with wso2 or wso2is. And our Slack channel is wso2is.slack.com. Thanks for watching this video. Hope to meet you in another exciting training video.